Hello to Maureen, so we can get started. Hey, Maureen, how are you doing today? <laughs> hi, Sam. I am doing well. I hope you are doing well as well. And hi to everybody. Oh, I love it. So we're going to get started. Um, first question is pretty simple. If you just want to let everyone know um, who you are, just a little bit about um, Maureen Stevens designs um, and a little bit about your background. All right. Well, so I am Maureen Stevens and I founded my uh, namesake company called Maureen Stevens Design in the fall of 2013 and I really started as a prop stylist or um, an interior stylist so I started with just very small vignettes and then somebody asked me to do a room and then a couple of rooms and it kind of blossomed to doing residential and commercial projects so I've been very very grateful uh, for all the people that have supported me um, and um, I feel very very lucky uh, with that. I love it. Well, and Maureen's actually a, our 2020 Design Award winner, Visions Design Award winner, selected by judges. Uh, I think you're excellent, but uh, a handful of judges selected your design uh, as our best design. I love all of the colors you use. Um, I personally, like even trying to pick designs to showcase on the slides at the beginning, I was like, oh, which, which one should I even choose from? You do an excellent <laughs> job. Um, so when did you know you wanted to be an interior designer and what did that process look like for you? Yeah, well, I mean, first, I am very, very grateful. Um, we actually joined the contest, like, maybe, like, that day or, like, a day before. And I was like, oh, my God, I forgot about this, and I should have. And we, you know, and to be recognized by peers and, you know, the people who are into the sign and have, you know, their their brand name in the sign. It's been a, a very, very great journey for me. So thank you, Sam. Thank you, Vision. Um, you know, I really would say I probably started, you know, loving design as, as a child. I mean, maybe not knowing it at, at that point yet. You know, I do remember, and my sister, if, if she's here, she would vouch that I would kind of just style like little things together, rearrange furniture um, and, and things like that. I, I really thought I was just obsessive compulsive, but you know, the, that obsessive compulsiveness probably, <laughs> um, you know, kind of turned into trying to organize things and making things uh, beautiful. So yeah, and I want to show you a few pictures, I guess, you know, when I was a child, I was like looking at old pictures and I'm like, oh yeah, I was into design back then. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> So uh, yeah, bear, yeah, bear with me. So, all right. Uh -huh. So here you go. Yes. So, so this is me as a as a child. You can see the apple cut. This is kind of showing my age now, but <laughs> and this heavy bangs. But anyway, this is my best Golden Girls inspired picture. You know, with the florals and the pinks. And, you know, so I really love color back then. And at the same time, I also cannot underestimate the, uh, the importance or how beautiful neutrals are as well. So like in this left picture, I, you know, I have a white, I would say gown yeah. and um, I have like a texture, you know, organic texture behind me. So just kind of juxtaposing those together, you know, is definitely beautiful as well. I love it. Yeah, and I think this will trail into our next question, which is um, just tell us about your award-winning design. Um, do you have a favorite part? Uh, obviously, if you have any pictures, we would love that too. Um, or anything that was challenging, um, any stories that you have from it? Yeah, so um, the the house um, that, uh, that was, that that won the award is in Houston. So it, it's in the Montrose part of Houston. And I live in Austin at that time. So I would think the very, um, you know, first challenge is that it's remote. I learned, um, I knew the client from afar. So, and I only met with her like two times during the whole process. And mm -hmm. it was almost like a year long process because it's a renovation, like pretty much of you know, a lot of big parts of the house. It's a renovation and then it's decoration and all of those things. So, but really what made it in a way kind of easy and seamless is that I had a very, well, not necessarily my team, but the client had a very, very good team. Well, first and foremost, the client is, um, you know, very stylish already. She knows what she likes. Uh, and then the builders and the architects um, are really awesome as well. So really when you start a project, it's important to have a great team. It's all about collaboration. It's all about good communication. It really takes a village to kind of get a, um, a design or a project get together and to kind of have that vision um, come to life. 
So yeah, and I do want to share, um, yeah, a few pictures with you. Excellent. I love the entryway wallpaper. Hopefully that's yes, uh, yeah. in here because that's like, that's right now, that's perfect. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly in my mind, like what I would love to incorporate in my house right now. Yes. So yeah, so I, you know, I would say that definitely this, you know, this project was driven by color and it was really just all about what the client wanted and obviously kind of what I want as well. So our needs and wants kind of jive together. So when you ask like, what is my favorite part? It's really kind of hard to say, but like you said, the entryway is really one of my favorite. Um, so we really did not change a lot just because there is a lot of natural light coming in and we really don't want to disturb that. You know, we didn't want to put like drapery in there. We didn't want to put a big console. And as you can see, the, you know, the door and the window are very big. But I did tell the client, I said, you know, we need like a little glimpse of color. You know, we can't just paint it like just just one color. We have to have something vibrant and something beautiful. So um, so I suggested this wallpaper uh, to her and she was just on board right away. And I think it's really just the perfect juxtaposition with the outside, the inside, this parquet colors and really this rustic bench, you know, over here. Yeah. Um, and I'll share with you the next one, so, um, which is the kitchen. And again, you know, when you look at a project, um, or at least like for me, um, you know, I have a vision of like what it was before. It was dark. It was closed in. Um, it's, a, it's a 1920s house, by the way. So at that time, they really do not like open areas. So, but here actually like on this side, like where the pendants are was actually closed in. And then where the refrigerator was, was closed in as well. So there was like a hallway. So we opened all of that up. So you can kind of see all the trees in the outside and really just kind of playing with, um, with the tiles that we chose, which is green and geometric. So we have um, the white shaker cabinets and the floors was actually like one of those very old uh, tiles, you know, as well, kind of like Italian um, tiles, but it was very, very dark. So we, we put like, um, like wooden floors and we actually painted it white. And I know you can't see it, but um, like on the inside of it or like some of the perimeter, we actually put like a brass inlay. So when you look at a picture, there are so many things going on or so many details that we really kind of did, um, you know, as, as we went along the way. Um, and another favorite is also um, the master bathroom. So this is the master bathroom, which believe it or not, used to be a sitting room. Um, so I think in the 1920s or I guess back then, um, the toilet or the restrooms are just like very, very small. So we open it up, we put a shower um, and uh, two sinks, um, you know, a his and her sink. I know it's black and white, but do know that black and white are also colors, obviously, oh, yeah. and they can give a space a lot of impact. And we just kind of ac accented it with brass details. Uh, we have some leather poles that are, we pulled in the camels and browns. And this little chair or bench right here, the floating bench, I mean, we chose from like, well, there's so many stains out there, but I kind of narrowed it down to three, to two and to one. So again, another proof that it takes so much detail to kind of make um, a space kind of come together and really be cohesive. I love it. We actually have, if, if Sharon is ready, um, we had a question from someone uh, yeah. in the audience. Let me see if I can find her. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade her to a panelist so she can actually ask you the question herself. Okay. Um, <laughs> perfect. So Sharon, you can actually turn on your camera. We can see you and you can go ahead and ask the question yourself. You're still muted though. I'll unmute you. Sharon, <laughs> no. <laughs> or you can type it. If you want, we can save it till the end. All right, she might need to figure that out. So we'll give her some time to, to figure that out. She is a, on a panelist mode. So when she's ready, uh, we'll, we'll ask her when she's ready. Okay, well, I love that. I, I mean, I obviously, I mean, obviously we really love the design. Um, so was there anything in particular that was challenging? I love that you mentioned at the beginning, um, you were in two different places. 
uh, Austin and uh, Houston. So it, it almost feels like you were set up for this virtual type of world um, by practice in advance. I know this is kind of a curveball questions, but um, what did you do? Like, how did you tackle being so far apart? Yes, um, you know, kind of like, like you said, I guess even before, you know, the situation that we're in right now, I really did a lot of virtual, you know, a virtual design. So we're in, I would meet the client just for a few times and really visit their project maybe one or two times and, um, you know, do the design where I'm at and just kind of send it to them. Um, I really think we we'll, we live in a world now where communication is very easy. You know, there are so many tools. Um, again, this this webinar or this Zoom meeting that we are doing, I um, who among you have had to several Zoom parties? I've had like five or six so far. And um, yep, and actually, I am having a Zoom party myself with my little wine glass over I here. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so um, I do Zoom meetings, you know, like we are doing right now. And also, again, like a lot of communication and setting expectations. Um, early on, I asked my, my clients um, a lot of questions to really kind of know more about them. And it's all about their needs and wants and what really their vision is for, uh, for their space and listen and observe intently. So um, I would encourage or I will tell them, hey, kind of walk me around your house or send me a video or send me a lot of pictures, send me a lot of, you know, inspiration images and um, really just kind of going from there. Um, you know, in the design world, we call that a design study or this, a design research. We're mm -hmm. in, we're really learning more about you and really learning more about your needs and wants and, you know, to make your project and, and the space that you are in as, as beautiful as it can be and as you envision it to be. I love it. And that, I mean, that brings on another question. So I, I, everything that you have shown, I am like, I would put that in my house in a second. <laughs> I know my husband would be a, a different story as far as how we can make him get on our bandwagon. Um, how, how can you convince people to be a little bit more riskier? Are there any tips that you have about getting people comfortable with color? Yeah, well, I guess I would say from, you know, just kind of from my own experience first, like with my clients, you know, a lot of my clients, I've been very, very um, grateful that, you know, a lot of my clients are really so awesome. Uh, a lot of them really come to me saying that, you know, I'm so tired of all the neutrals. I've been there, done that. I want somebody who can push me out of my comfort zone and really kind of go out of my boundaries, you know, because sometimes, you know, one of them even said, just being too vanilla, it's just too vanilla. I don't <laughs> like that anymore. So, uh, so, but obviously there are times as well when, when a client is like really, really hesitant. And, um, you know, there is a way where designers kind of like push you a little bit, but obviously not like push you to where you're not comfortable. And I think that's also something that I kind of have learned along the way, you know, when to push and when not to push. And to me, it's really just as simple as getting a design board, you know, together, getting a mood board together and showing them that look at this, you know, it may look so serene and calm, but then if you look closely at all of the details, I mean, there's like some pinks going on in there. Mm -hmm. There are some yellows going on in there and they don't even like realize it. So just kind of, um, yeah, all of this things that we have right now, whether it's Instagram, it's house, it's Pinterest, and obviously the vision app as well, mm -hmm. you know, getting a, a design board together and showing them that and showing them that it can be beautiful and can look cohesive um, with the right colors and with the right doses of each one, it can be a great space, even if they're not into color right away. I love that. And just kind of on that point too, would you say that you have a signature style? Um, and as far as colors concerned, is there any colors right now that you're like, this is a must have in my space? Yeah. Um, so actually I'm wearing it right now. I think this is kind of the muted color. I'm trying to stay on brand, but, yeah. um, but yeah, let me show you that. Um, yeah, let me share my screen and bear with me. I can see it. Oh, oh you can see it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm seeing something else. So yep, there you go. All right, so this is my current favorite color. Um, so I went to the Vision app and I 
oh. I looked or found, you know, the colors uh, that I like. I've been leaning towards this, I think, since the start of the year. Uh, so this is Sherwin-Williams Sock Eye, so which I also call the new salmon. So I, I love this color. I recently use it to, um, in one of my projects um, here in New Orleans. So, um, and uh, the other colors that I really, really like, you know, and how I kind of got it together. So this is like a little mood board. Oh, yeah. um, so this one, I was inspired by Caribbean colors. Um, you know, to, to everybody, I am actually in New Orleans, you know, at this time, but I do split my time between Austin and New Orleans. But I do have um, a lot of virtual clients as well. And just to kind of let everybody know, I will travel as well once this is all done. I love to travel <laughs> anyway. So, um, so yeah, so anyway, so this is the sock eye color and um, I added some deep greens, you know, with it, maybe some coppers. Uh, and then this wallpaper, I think really kind of, you know, getting it together uh, with this color made it more vibrant. And you can see the, the colors, you know, in here as well. And this art uh, piece, uh, again, kind of, exemplifies um, the vision that I have for, for the space. I love it. I mean, I, I love all of it. That color is excellent. Um, I have a similar color in my bathroom. It might be two shades darker, um, okay. but I'm like, <laughs> I'm right there for it. Um, so where do you go for your inspiration? Where is it that you're looking to like pull all of these things together? Yeah. Well, so first I want to, um, and I, I apologize, Sam. I want to ask, I want to show, uh, answer your question about my, um, you know, what my favorite color is. Oh, yeah. um, so I know I showed you sock eye, which is, you know, my favorite color as of the moment. But, you know, in 2013, when I started my, uh, my design business, the Pantone color of the year was 2013. And was was emerald green, and and really and truly, I just kind of like realized that. So in 2013, so this is my this was my house in Austin, and you can see that um, I I have this lamps that are in emerald green, yeah. and then this mirror right here used to be gray. I painted it black with a little green trim, and this right here, when I used to have more time, I actually painted this. Oh, so wow. this is, yeah, so this is an art piece, uh, which um, I know when I ask people, I'm like, what is that? Uh, it's actually like a little glimpse of the Arc de Triomphe. So, um, so yeah, that was my uh, favorite color and it still is the, my favorite color. So you probably will see that a lot um, in my design. Um, and then as far as um, inspiration, so um, yeah, so I kind of gathered some pictures over here. Um, can you see it? Yep. Okay, okay, yeah. So I really, um, inspiration is really all, um, here, let me just talk first. Um, inspiration is really all around us. Um, you know, I am very, I, I am a very curious person. I am very observant. Um, and, and actually, I know my, my husband can vouch to this as well. Like, I would go and just kind of walk a street somewhere, and I would take, like, the walls, the floors, like a little architectural detail. Um, you know, restaurants are definitely like very, very big as well. You know, whether it's a posture restaurant or it's a hole in the wall, like one has a lot of quirks and one has like really a lot of design elements that I can gather um, inspiration from. And then antique stores, um, I guess it's kind of like a no brainer. You will hear, hear designers, antique stores, vintage stores. I mean, we really do like it a lot. I have been known when I used to live in, in Texas, I have been known to jump out of my car. Like every little town where, where it says antique alley over yeah. here or old town. Um, yeah, and, and again, my, my, my daughter will vouch to that as well. You know, we're in, we're kind of just driving, going to a place and I'm like, Oh my God, antique store, we got to stop. So, um, yes, and, and obviously travel, you know, travel is very, very big. And it doesn't, it, again, it can be local. Um, you know, when, when I lived in Austin, we used to go to like little towns. I, we will go to like bed and breakfast and just kind of like little, little places, you know, there. And um, I would see so, so many things. So let me reshare my screen again and kind of just show you the recent things that um, inspired me. 
Um, so yeah, so over here, um, you can see that this was actually, I think this was like 6 a.m. or something. Uh, <laughs> this is in Round Top, and I really kind of, it's, it's very, very big in Texas, and um, I, I did go a lot, and I, um, yeah, I would go early on so that we can pick like really, really early. Um, this is like a little vignette in, in Marburger or Round Top Marburger again. So which I think is, you know, it's just like very, very cool. Um, so it's all of this uh, luggage and trunks and kind of just juxtaposing them together. They're very, very deep colors. Uh, that's me a long time ago. But, you know, just to kind of letting you know that this, you know, champagne bucket um, over here, a champagne trunk with like a cushion. Um, I have had that maybe for about 10 years now. Um, a lot of my finds can be found um, in my home, um, just just all over because I, I love them. I keep them like like really, I would say for eternity. Um, this is a little art piece that um, was at a museum. I mean, like, just look at the, how deep the lapis are, uh, is, and also the black and kind of getting together with the gold. Um, the other, um, I go to shops, obviously, inter design shops. This is Mui, uh, which is in Amsterdam. And um, I went to the Philippines, which is where I'm from. Uh, this is a hotel in Manila and also just to kind of tell everybody you don't like really have to um, Get a room, you know at a hotel. I mean some of these place, uh, places are too posh for me I can't afford it So I would really just go to the lobby and just kind of see you know, what are the, the design details? Um, you know that they had um, this is in the Philippines as well with with my sister and um, this is actually believe it or not is wood mosaic just from the bottom up oh, wow. so this is a museum um i love doors i love doors all of my friends will say i stop at any door that has a lot of architectural <laughs> elements so and uh sometimes i post sometimes i don't post i have like thousands of door pictures uh on my phone uh this is another testament how i love um antiques uh this is in amsterdam again and i had to kind of pull my sister and say yep we're gonna go out of our way to go to this um mm -hmm. to go to this uh antique uh center and this is a restaurant um this is sketch london which i know a lot of design lovers know um so we just had me and my daughter just had um coffee and pastry. So we kind of went like really small, just so we can kind of take in the ambiance and experience it. So um, really just, you know, for everybody, inspiration is everywhere. You, you have to look, but you have to look and you have to find it. Um, you know, it doesn't, um, I guess to me, um, I'm very, very curious. Again, I have tons of magazines and, you know, at my bedside, um, at my table, all of the restrooms yeah. have like <laughs> piles and piles and piles of magazines. They're really just all over. So yeah, so I would just kind of, um, you know, tell everybody that when you start like getting a project together or getting a space together to really look around them and catalog all of the things that inspire them, you know, every day. And, and then once you see them, you know, look all of them and you'll see a pattern. Um, you will see that you, you love something specific and then you love another one and you kind of mesh them together and it will be um, a great design and a great inspiration. Yeah, I love it. And I honestly, I'm very similar. Anytime that we travel, I always go to Yelp. I try to rank the food high, but I always look for the interiors to see like, what space do I want to be around? How can I potentially see how things work together? I actually had the idea for vision in a restaurant. Um, same thing, I had a color inspiration and I was like, oh, I love that color, couldn't find what I wanted, hence vision. So I am with you and it's definitely something to look forward to once all of this is over, being back in beautiful spaces um, because I, I very much so, I think the experience of being in a place that's well designed, it just, it does have that feeling. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even it, picture with me, picture without me, either way, like as long as I have someone else next to me, usually it looks pretty good. <laughs> um, if uh, I was curious, are there any current trends um, that you currently are in love with or anything that you hate? And I'll add on top of that, do you ever have to talk a client off a ledge of something you know is not going to be a trend next year? <laughs> and you're like, uh, how do I be yeah. respectful? 
Um, that is a, that is a very good question. Um, so I guess as, as a designer, you know, we do love a lot of different styles. And I always say, which really kind of sounds cliche, it really is all about what the client's needs and wants are. Yes, I have my own style and I do try to infuse it. Um, and I know they hired me to kind of in infuse that or kind of give them, kind of segue them into that direction. But at the same time, I am not changing your vision. You know, I want you to be who you are. I want you to like what you like. Although really sometimes, you know, a lot of people are just like, but I like this and I like that. I like a million things, you know, and that again is because of Pinterest and Instagram. There's so many out there. And as designers, you know, our job is to kind of curate them, edit them and make, and make them like very, very cohesive. Um, as far as me, you know, what my favorite style is or what I lean towards, um, I call it updated classic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I also call it historic neoteric. It's kind of like a new word that I coined. I'm very, like very it. proud of it. <laughs> but, um, so, but anyway, so it's really just all about getting all classic and historical elements together. So I was saying how I love um, architectural elements and I do try to infuse that a lot, you know, in my design. Um, yes, I am also influenced by trends. Yeah, obviously we all are, but um, you know, a client who is calling for something very modern and trendy, I would infuse that. And, but for somebody who says that, you know, I really don't want anything that will not be here anymore next year, yeah. then there are really ways to kind of infuse a little bit of the trend. Um, so which, you know, I would say like little pops, whether it's in accessories or an art and not go all out. You still have a little bit of that trend, but not, you know, but not all of it. Um, and then as far as things that I, hate or don't like at the moment again you know i said i don't hate any style i i i love a lot of styles um and i also think it's kind of when um i talk to somebody and really kind of draw them out is when i start knowing what style is their style right. so it's because what you want you know whether it's rustic or farmhouse it doesn't make you wrong you know that's what you love so let's capitalize on that and let's let's use that um, but as far as, you know, things that I don't like is when one thing is to, when a design is too mono, monotone. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, like, like right now, mid-century modern and bohemian is very, very big. You know, you see it everywhere. And I love both styles. But I don't like it when it's 100% just mid-century modern, you know, and that's it. I really believe in mixing styles to making a space that's very layered, uh, that's very textural, that really tells a story, and that's very exciting um, and you love for a long, long time. So again, I do not dislike anything. I think it's just <laughs> kind of when something is just kind of too much, yeah. you know, too much of one thing. I think it's great though too is you have to make sure that as you're working with like more in your interior designer you're the person who like reins me in to be like uh you might love that now but that's definitely <laughs> something that's I mean five years you're gonna be like why did she let me do this <laughs> yes um, we do have uh some questions this is from Haley she asked it, um what's your work experience or education I'm really interested in knowing your background yeah, so my background is actually, uh, which um, I think a lot of designers kind of have a different career, a different background before. Mm -hmm. I am actually a physical therapist. That's what I went. To, that's what I went to school for. So, um, so like I said, in, in 2013, it's when I built my built my um, you know my design brand and also my um, my design company. But um, you know, I, I think all of us. Um, kind of are predilected to kind of do something. It may be something that we kind of went to college that mm -hmm. it's not necessarily what we went to college for. I'm very, very grateful to be a physical therapist and I love it. Um, I don't see patients anymore, but I'm still a physical therapist and I am focusing on design. So that is my, my background. It really, um, yeah, I did a lot of soul searching. Um, I would say really 10 years ago, um, as far as like, 
I know there's another part or another layer of, of me that I really want to explore and it led me to design. I've spoken with a few interior designers and a lot of them have a very similar story where it's, um, it wasn't instinctive or it wasn't something where you went, like you were born and you're like, I'm going to be a designer. <laughs> yes. Many people like find it, they fall into it. Like you start designing your own house, you probably just start having money in your own space to be able to say like, oh crap, I'm great at this. So I think that's a totally normal uh, type of vibe. Uh, and someone, Becca, in our audience was also in school for occupational therapy. Oh, so, wow. like, I did not know that. <laughs> that <was> a, <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So as far as, I want to ask just one random question. On it. Um, as far as like right now with, um, we won't say the C word, COVID. Um, I said it. <laughs> you did. There, there are a few C words you're supposed to say, so I wanted to make sure everyone knew what I was talking about. Um, are you taking virtual consultations right now, or are there ways that you're working differently to, to help with clients or gain other clients? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. And um, yeah, so which, let me, let me kind of open my slide again um, over here. Um, I will obviously kind of let you know where to find me, but I am actually launching a, a, a service. Um, I, I call it Let's Find It, which is really, I find that a lot of old clients or maybe just, you know, just people don't, other people don't want the long-term commitment. Right. You know, when they think of design, they think of it as, you know, it's going to be a long process. It's going to be a relationship with this designer. It's going to be expensive or something like that. I really found that, um, you know, like, let's say really just my friends, you know, will ask, oh, well, I just need a sofa, you know, or something like that. And, um, you know, something so important, like a hallway, you're like, I've been trying to look for an art and I haven't found the one. I don't know what I like. So let's find it. It's really just, um, you know, a service that I would like to offer to everybody and anybody out there, uh, wherever you are, that if you're looking for something specific, then I can help you. Um, I think, you know, that's um, one of my strong suits. Uh, we call it sourcing and interior design, you know, where and you're looking for things. Uh, so with all of these brands that are in our fingertips and and obviously the virtual exhibit is very, uh, is, is amazing, like John Richard and, uh, Industry West uh, are all design brands that I've used before. Hello. So, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. And then really as far as, you know, what I'm changing right now, um, obviously I do a lot, you know, we do design visits, kind of see how the project is coming along. So um, some of my projects are halted, but some are still ongoing and they obviously kind of do understand what's going on. We'll do a Zoom meeting like this. Uh, if they're installing something, um, you know, whether it's a curtain again or an art, we'll do like a FaceTime and I will say, oh, move it up a little bit or move it to the right or move it to the left. So That's again, the I never get it right. <laughs> yeah, yes. um, you know, like you can go online and kind of see all of those how to's and just say it's 10 inches from the console, you know, or something like this. But do know that each space, you know, is, is different. Yes, there is kind of like, a general role, but, but the role of kind of placement is, is kind of changes, yeah. you know, where, where you are. So yes, all of these tools I'm really, you know, using. Um, and I also like really have an online software that I use for, um, you know, for design um, that, you know, where, where I kind of communicate with my clients. I love that. Yeah, I think Let's Find It is is great because it's better to take advice from someone who's a specialist like you than from maybe, not that I, my mom isn't fashionable, but <laughs> it might not be the best resource to help me select a color or a couch. So I love that. So let's flash, because uh, we're wrapping up, let's flash your uh, social one more time in ways that people can yeah. connect with you. All I'll right. make sure so. you email this out to everyone too. Um, so especially with like the let's find it, um, if you guys need any help from Maureen, I love that. I love that you have your vision profile on there too. My heart is warm. <laughs> yes. Um, but there's a Maureen's contact information. I'm not seeing any other questions other than things that you've done are beautiful and your colors are excellent, uh, which I definitely <laughs> obviously agree with. Um, so thank you so much, Maureen, for everything. I'll make sure to send your information out to everyone. I really appreciate your time and everything that you've done today.
Thank you so much, Sam, and uh, thank you to everybody. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions uh, or anything at all, um, any comments, whatever, um, just email me. Um, some of you probably know my number, or you can text me, uh, whatever it is. And um, I am very grateful and I'm thankful. And you all have a very good one and stay safe and healthy. Yes, yeah, stay safe, everyone. Thanks again, Maureen. All right, bye. Bye.